Hi, I'm Mike from ATB Guitars and today we're going to do a video which has been requested by a fair few people and one which I'm looking forward to myself. We're going to give you a top 10 rundown of the best performing vintage guitars in investment terms over the last 10 years. Okay, so before I get too far into the video, there's a few caveats which I'd like to just uh, announce here. Uh, we're focusing on vintage guitars from 2012 to 2022, and we're focusing on just the brands and types which we specialize in, i.e. vintage Fender and Gibson, mainly solid bodied guitars, but also thin lines from um, the 50s through to 1975. Uh, after 1975 there's bound to be very good performers out there which have done well over these last 10 years but because we don't specialize in those guitars I'm not really able to say how well they've done so I'm concentrating on just guitars we know here and it's going to be a relatively, well, relatively narrow list, but there will be a lot of famous ones in there. The other limitation I, I'd just like to quickly discuss is that this is for a UK-centric market. Before Brexit, it would have had relevance to the European market as well, and there will be some overlap to the US and international markets. In fact, uh, I asked a few of my dealer friends internationally for their opinions on uh, what they thought were the best performing guitars of the last 10 years so I've incorporated their ideas into that as well and that is those who responded and uh, in particular I'd like to thank um, South Side Guitars in Brooklyn, Jay Rosen Guitars in, um, in Emeryville, California for, for help in compiling all this. So before I get into the top 10 which I'm sure you're all waiting to hear um, I'm just going to give a very quick overview of how vintage guitar prices have changed over the last 20 years or so from, the, from this century, basically. In the 90s, there was uh, a reasonable good growth of most vintage guitars, usually around 5% a year, sometimes more, depending on the model. Um, this growth started to accelerate in the early 2000s and from about 2003, 2004, it started to accelerate quite rapidly, as did other investments as well. Uh, not just guitar, but all alt investments were accelerating in value, like art, also the housing market, as we obviously know, increased in value a lot during that period. Stocks indices also increased, and it was uh, the that period up to 2007, 2008 was a very, very buoyant time. But as we all know now, it was artificially inflated. There was a crash at 2008. And from 2008 to 2013, uh, guitars went down in value. Not by as much as they had increased from 2005, but they did go down a bit. And it took until 2013-2014 to for the recovery to finally take place. So the period we're covering does include a bit of guitar recession, so to speak. So it won't be an all uphill graph if we did plot it on a graph. Um, from 2013-2014 onwards, it was reasonably steady, sometimes a flat growth in values. And then 2018, it started to accelerate again slightly. Not as much as it did in the um, mid-2000s, that's for sure, but it did start to go up. We noticed that in particular. And uh, in 21, 22, there was quite a sharp increase in values due to the COVID situation, the lockdown. Basically, no one was able to bring their guitars to dealers, to guitar shows. The supply was very, very limited, but the demand was still there. So as a consequence of that, when um, demand outstrips supply, prices do tend to go up. And that's what's happened over the last year. 
And will that continue? We don't see any signs of it, not yet, but it's, it's early days to say, really. Right, so I know you want to get into the top 10, but before I do, here's a quick disclaimer. I'm not a financial expert. Um, I'm just a guy who loves guitars and owns a guitar store. So um, don't treat this as financial advice. Uh, any past growth is not indicative of future growth. So uh, just bear that in mind when I go through the individual guitars and tell you what they've risen or declined or whatever. Just, just bear that in mind, that's all I'm trying to say. So, without too much further ado, here is number 10 of the best performing guitars over the last 10 years. It is the 1958 to 1960 Gibson Les Paul Standard Burst. Now, a lot of you may be surprised to find this down at number 10. A lot of people would think it would be a lot higher up in the list, but the Burst really had their massive growth in value during the 70s and 80s and they've now at a position where by um, their growth is good but it's not it's not fantastic when you compare it to other guitars they are a solid investment so they're probably the, the most talked about guitar most discussed guitar on the planet and they're also probably the most sought after as well so they'll always be a healthy market for them but uh, Prices have probably reached getting towards their peak for now, but we'll see what happens later on. I remember in 2012, uh, I sold my first burst for just under 170,000, and uh, that same guitar now would probably be worth about 250,000. Uh, the, the example I'm using is a 1959 with mild flame with no issues. Uh, guitars with spectacular tops will sell for an awful lot more than this and there will be a great demand for those and guitars with issues will sell for less but generally what we're looking at is a 48% growth over that 10 year period. Okay, number 9 on our list of best investment returns. This by the way is in percentage terms, it's not in terms of overall value it's in percentage terms. But number nine on our list is the Gibson ES-335 from 1958 through to 1964. Um, the model we've based this on is a 1963 Stocktail, cherry red one. The earlier ones are 59 Long Guards and 58s have gone up a lot more than this. Um, the uh, later ones with the, with the narrow nuts have gone up a lot less than this so we thought we'd pick a 63 as a, as a baseline. So a 1963 Stoptail ES-335 in 2012 we'd be selling for around um, 12, 13,000 pounds. In 2022 the same guitar would now be worth 20, um, maybe a bit more depending on the exact configuration and condition but that's the sort of baseline price for a, a, a really good, no issues, 63. Blondes are even more expensive and they've gone up a lot more, but uh, this is basically the average of 335s and it shows us a 58.3-ish percent rise over that 10 year period. Okay, number eight on our list of top 10 is the Fender Jazzmaster, which for a lot of you is probably not so much of a surprise if you've tried to buy one recently, a vintage pre-CBS one. Uh, the Jazzmaster we chose to focus on is a 1959 Nitrate Guard version, not the Anodized Guard version, uh, which we were selling 2012 for about 7,000 just under and in 2022 we're, we're selling them for 12,000 quite easily. Now they have gone up in value a lot recently, uh, i.e. over the last um, three years and certainly over the pandemic period. Um, the reason for that I guess is uh, indie bands seem to like them, they, they, they're the cool flavour of the month guitar at the moment and um, we're, we're getting very very strong interest whenever we have one in. Um, so custom colours 
I'll just quickly touch on that. Custom colors have gone up even more, and we're not concentrating on custom colors so much because each custom color has a separate value on it. And as I said before, the anodized guard versions have gone up even more still. So if you're lucky enough to have a 59 or 58 with an anodized guard, then uh, it's gone up an awful lot more than the standard Jazzmaster, which on our calculations has shown an increase of 73%. Okay, number seven is the Gibson SG Standard, which was the model made from 1961 through to 1965. And the one we're actually focusing on is a 61 with the sideways trem in cherry red, everyone's favorite. These guitars uh, are still relatively affordable when you compare it to other path equipped Les Paul standards. Um, they're still quite a bargain in, in our opinion. Uh, but they've caught on. In 2012 we were selling SG standards in Cherry with the sideways trem for nine and a half thousand. In 2022 you'd be looking at paying around 18,000 pounds for the same guitar. So they've, they have actually showed very good growth. Um, there is problems with them, obviously, a lot of them broken, so I think that has helped increase the values of the ones which haven't been broken. And uh, I, I think, personally, that there's more, there's more to come with these guitars, that they would be a good investment, even at their uh, higher prices right now. And they have showed an increase of nearly 79% over the last 10 years. Number six on our top 10 list of best performing investment guitars are Gibson Les Paul Standard Gold Tops from 1952 through to 1956. The one we're going to be focusing on is the 1954 Raptail, which in 2012 we were selling for 16,000, around that sort of price range. In 2022, you would now be looking at paying 30,000 at least for a nice example of one of these, uh, which is pretty good growth, really. It's not just that particular version which has increased in value, even the old original trapeze tail 52 gold tops have gone up by pretty much the same amount as the, um, as the wrap tails. And the 57 humbucker equipped ones, although it doesn't cover in this particular segment, uh, have also increased uh, considerably as well. But these gold tops from 1952 to 1956 have generally shown an 87.5% increase over the last 10 years, which uh, is not too bad really, is it? So we're halfway through and this is number five on our top 10 list and it is the Gibson ES330, specifically versions from 1959 through to 1963. These guitars have increased in popularity a lot over 10 years. I remember in 2012 we were selling 59 ES330s for 5,000. In 2022 you can't buy one for under 10,000. It's pretty much impossible if you're looking for a good one. It's the same rough proportionate increase for the models from 1960 up to 1962-ish, the ones with a dot neck. They, although they don't go for so much money, they have proportionately increased in value. Um, this is just because people are discovering what a wonderful guitar they are. They're, they're great guitars just to have sitting by your couch to pick up and play and noodle whenever you want. They're, they're perfect for that and uh, their 100% their increase in value over the last 10 years, in my opinion, is completely justified. So we're up to number four on the list now, and this is one which, if you've been following our listings over the last 10 years, you, you, there's probably no surprise that this one's in here at all. And number four on the list of the top 10 best performing investment vintage guitars over the last 10 years has been pre-CBS Fender Stratocasters. Everyone seems to want one. It's like the blue chip guitar of the vintage guitar market. And they have showed really, really good growth. 
mainly down to popularity, uh, sound, playability, image, everything. They're, they're really, really good performers. And I, I think they will continue to be as well. Everyone wants strats, and I can't see that tailing off at all. So in 2012, we were selling 1963 Fender strats in Sunburst, which is, which is what I'm going to use as a benchmark, for around £11,000. In 2022, if you want one today, you'd be looking at paying around £23,000 for one. And we sell them for that price fairly regularly, so uh, it's, not, it's not a hype uh, at these levels. The, um, the earlier maple neck ones have shown similar increases in value. Uh, the value increase starts to tail off when you get to 65, but they've always increased. And while I'm on the subject of, of oddballs, um, even refins have showed nearly 100% increase in value. Pre-CBS refin guitars have gone up 100% since 2012. So there's no surprise at all that pre-CBS strats are high up on this list and they've showed an increase in value of 110% over the last 10 years. The price increase does not take into account custom colour strats which have actually increased into the stratosphere in some instances. So uh, these are just for some bursts strats from the pre-CBS era. So number three in our list of top 10 is probably not much of a surprise to those who follow the vintage guitar market. Number three are Fender Telecaster Blackguards, which are basically ones from 1950 through to 1954. Uh, there's always strong interest for Blackguards. I remember in uh, 2012, we were selling these for around 23,000 pounds. This is original ones, by the way. Today in 2022, if you want a blackguard of that period, an original one you'd be looking for around £50,000. So that's a pretty good increase in value. They, they have always been uh, one of the, like pre-CBS Strats, the blue chip guitar in anyone's collection. And uh, they've been very, very desirable instruments. At the um, peak of... Um, 2007 they were a lot more than they were today so they've probably still got more to climb um, but at £50,000 for a Fender Telecaster that's uh, quite a bit of money but um, in my opinion once you play one and you you get into the feel of one you'll discover that they're worth it and they're a pretty good investment to have. So blackguards have generally gone up over the past 10 years 118% return on investment. Uh, broadcasters, no casters, which are black cards as well, obviously, they've gone up even more, but the benchmark we've been using for this calculation is the 1953 Fender Telecaster black card, original finish, and in uh, excellent condition, with original case, because the original case is, uh, is actually worth more than the number one guitar was worth in 2012 funny enough. Stay tuned and uh, you'll find out what this is. Right, we're getting to the top now. Number two on our list of best performing vintage guitars over the last 10 years has been the Fender Jaguar. Uh, from humble beginnings on the vintage guitar market to its current level, it's shown quite a surge in popularity and value. We were selling uh, 62 Jaguars, which is what we're going to use as the benchmark on this one. 62 um, first year Jaguars in 2012 for £4,000, if you can believe that. Today you'd be looking at paying £9,500 for an original one in excellent condition, so that's quite, quite a rate of return. Not only that, you, you get a lot of Jaguars in custom colours. It's a very, very popular thing to want to have a, a custom colour Jaguar and they will have shown more uh, increase in value than the Sunburst ones, obviously, but again, because there's so many different custom colours, so many different values depending on what colour it is, we're concentrating on the standard Sunburst ones here, which have shown an increase in value of 138% 
over 10 years. So here we have it finally, the number one vintage guitar which, which has increased in value in percentage terms over the last 10 years. And again, it's probably not so much of a surprise for a lot of you who've been following our posts, following our listings. The number one guitar which has increased over the last 10 years is Gibson Les Paul Juniors from 1954 through to 1960. Uh, the one we're going to be using as a benchmark is a 1956 single cut. There's some interesting things about the way these have increased in value. Back in 2012, we were selling single cut 56 juniors for £3,500. Now in 2022, if you wanted to buy one in really nice condition, you'd be looking at paying around £11,000. Uh, which is an increase in percentage terms of 234%. To give you some kind of a comparison, that is nearly twice as much as the number two on our list in terms of um, percentage increase. The funny thing was, uh, back in 2012, double cut juniors are worth more than single cut juniors, and now it's, uh, it's flipped the opposite way around. I'm not sure exactly why that is, uh, really don't know um, because there's been obviously players who play single cuts, players who play double cuts, but I don't think any one particular artist or group of artists have stood out uh, promoting one particular type over the other. So it's just a, a weird effect of price fluctuations, I think. Anyway, the Les Paul Junior, it's, it's increasing in value a lot, and again, deservedly so. Uh, people really cottoned on uh, around five years ago after the markets crashed after the 20, 2008 um, price hike. Uh, it became a very affordable guitar, and then people started to really cotton on about five years ago how good these guitars can actually be. And they're not just a one-trick pony. Um, they, you can do a lot with just a one pickup, and when you want to crank it up, it's just unbeatable. The uh, that really hot P90 pickup close to the strings is a totally unbeatable sound, and in my opinion, it's it is one of a deserved top ten in this list, and one which um, one which a lot of people love and will continue to love in the future as well. Now the final thing I'd like to say with Juniors is the 238% increases for the Sunburst ones. If we took the TV finish ones into consideration, then they, like some custom colour pre-CBS strats and tellies, have gone into the stratosphere, especially over the last two Covid years. Um, I've, I don't think I've seen guitars increase so much as, as these TV Juniors have. Uh, you'd be looking now at paying well over 15000 for a good example. Examples which we used to sell back in 2012 for around 4500 So it's, uh, it's, it's, it's quite amazing how those have increased in value. But um, the benchmark we decided to use the 56 Sunburst Junior and at 238% that's um, a pretty good rate of turn I think in anyone's books. So, I hope you enjoyed our top 10 list of investment vintage guitars. If you, if you have any comments or suggestions yourselves as what you think may have or should have been included in this list, then please drop us a line or leave the comments below. And if there's enough follow-up comments to be discussed, then I'll do another video about that. Uh, generally speaking, we think vintage guitars are a good investment. Uh, we did some comparisons with other investments. Um, for instance, if you'd invested £10,000 in, um, in the UK stock market, you wouldn't have got anything like the same return as you would with uh, vintage guitars. However, um, there are investments in the States, like the NASDAQ, which will produce even more return. So it's, it's a difficult one to balance. Um, my, I'm, I'm not a financial advisor, and obviously running a guitar, vintage guitar store, I'm pretty biased myself, but uh, we, we're in a lucky position here whereby if we hold any stock, 
we know it's not going to decrease in value, unlike a lot of car dealerships. So um, it's a good, it's in a good position to be in if we uh, if we've got stock here, and we've never lost money on uh, on guitars unless they've turned out to be not as described. But that's that's another story for another video. Thanks very much for watching. I hope you managed to make it towards the end, and please click the button, subscribe, ring the bell, and uh, we'll back, be back soon with some more videos for you. See you soon.